Dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Frank Sestro and I am here in Heidelberg, my home city in Germany. I'm an oral surgeon and uh, yeah, founder of the Real Bone Builders Group. This is my first um, video tutorial, uh, I can say, and uh, I was thinking um, how it could be interesting for you or which um, question we should uh, cover. And I was remembering a very good question uh, recently from a colleague. A participant of our group and um, he asked what um, yeah or when can we do bone augmentation and implant placement simultaneously and um, when do we have to do it in a two-step procedure so first bone augmentation and then after healing implant placement and um, to answer this question I have to talk a little bit about inside and outside the contour defects so we differ between defects which are inside the contour or inside the envelope and outside the envelope. So let me show you this. Uh, let me show you this. So this is an inside the contour defect. So let's also um, yeah, compare it with um, some of you guys are now on holidays, on vacation, on the sea and you're at the bay, at the beach, and uh, here it's uh, the bay and your kids, they swim here and it's all safe. And, uh, but behind the bay, there's the open sea and the rules change there. So it's dangerous, it's open sea, it's rough water, it's currents and uh, you see it's like that and uh, you know it's uh, dangerous. How can you compare this uh, to the mouth? Um, this is outside the contour, that means we have muscle activity. This changed everything. It has to be 100% stable, while inside the contour defect, a lot of things are working much better. So um, also when you have sometimes only autogenous bone particles, you think that you want to place maybe an implant here and you put some particles here on the outside. So. Unfortunately, I have to tell you, this does not work. It will get resolved. So you don't see it in the right beginning. You think it's uh, working um, because the, especially a thick gingiva mucosa uh, masks this. Uh, and you see first after a few years the problems, but don't do this. Don't um, place just particles without other stabilizing uh, methods uh, outside the contour. So this is quite important. While when you have an outside the contour defect, okay, something uh, let's say like this, and you want to place an implant here, so the threads are outside of the contour, outside the envelope, you can do bone augmentation and um, implant placement at the same time, but it's more risky. So don't take the risk, especially with the BBA concept and the split bone technique uh, invented by Professor Curry. You're quite fast, so it takes just three to four months healing because you know with our concept we are working already with the real bone. So don't take the risk. First, build the uh, bone, the new bone, okay, here with the screws, and then um, wait and then go for the implant placement. Let's say you're planning two implants, like another implant here, okay? Uh, how you should you place, if you know that in advance, the bone plates? Can you place them like here and here? I do not recommend this because what happens then is the tissue goes like that. That means you have here and here a risk that um, yeah, it's um, you get a, a, a sharp spike or a edge, and here you can can get exposure of the clot. So there should always be no space in between when you place the blocks. Okay, so this was actually our first uh, tutorial about the inside and outside the contour defects. So um, to come to a conclusion. Inside the uh, contour defect like those, you can do implant placement and bone augmentation at the same time, okay, with a split bone technique. And uh, outside the contour defects, you should do it in a safe way. We want to have a predictable results. Don't take risk. Do a two-step procedure. First bone augmentation with pure autogenous bone and then after three to four months, you can place the implants. Okay, so thanks for watching and um, have a wonderful su sunny day and uh, see you soon.